guys, welcome to Hair Play 101, giving you free beauty and barber education live right here in the flesh on YouTube. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome guys, and don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button at the end of this video if you found my content to be helpful to you and your cause. And if you are returning, thank you, welcome back, because I have a lot in store for you guys today. So, grab your pens, your papers, your mugs, your drinks, whatever you need to grab, because you don't want to miss this. I be feeling like the man when I walk through. Hang something what you saying when I walk through. I got all these hoes staring when I walk through. Hey guys, topic of discussion is healthy hair growing. Yes, healthy hair growing. Everybody wants healthy hair, so that's a known fact. Yes. But we can't always find the time or the products or even the skills to even attempt to try to deal with our hair sometimes and that is okay because I'm going to give you guys the secrets that the pros do coming straight from where the pros learn it. I'm going to tell you guys and give you all the secrets and tools you'll need to accomplish this mission without having to break the bank, break your back, or even frustrate yourself on maintaining and taking care of your hair. Okay, so before we get into the meat of the, the topic, there's a few things you have to know before you start this health, healthy hair care regimen. So this video got three objectives today. One, knowing how to find your hair type. Not everybody knows what kind of hair they have. It's a lot of confusion. And we're going to go over all of that. Two, knowing and determining what kind of condition your hair is in at the moment. That is very important. You need to know what kind of condition your hair is in before you proceed to buy any kind of products for your hair. Otherwise, you'll be wasting money. Three, knowing the difference between texture and density, porosity, and elasticity. So, that brings me to the question of the day. Will the texture of your hair match the density of your hair every time? We'll answer that question at the end of this video. So, stay tuned. We're going to get into all of the facts about it and hopefully this this will bring you closer to accomplishing that mission of having healthy hair okay guys first thing first i'm going to show you guys how you can find out your hair type now when i say your hair type your hair type refers to the texture of your hair and when I say texture of your hair, I mean exactly how the hair strand feels on your fingers. So if you were to pull your hair, run it through, texture would be how it feels. So you have three categories of texture. You have coarse, medium, and fine. And I'm gonna tell you guys the equivalent to what those feel like. So, for my people with coarse hair, your hair would feel something similar to wool. My people with medium hair, you guys will have a equivalent feel to touching cotton. And my fine babies, your hair would be equivalent to feeling silk. So, when you run your fingers through your hair, really examine how it feels. In most cases, your hair can have two different textures at one time. And the reason this happens is for quite a few reasons. Mostly if you are taking anything like um, blood pressure medications or 
any kind of medication of that sort, um, which can change and alter the textures of your hair in different areas. So it is possible to have more than one texture, especially if you are chemically treated. It will change and alter the texture of your hair. So don't forget, guys, texture is the feel of the hair strand. Okay? And coarse will be equivalent to wool. Medium is equivalent to cotton. And fine hair is equivalent to silk. Density is the number of active hair follicles within per square inch of the scalp, okay? AKA, how many hair strands, the number of hair strands in one particular area of the scalp. It can be either all over or sometimes, and in most cases, it can be in splotches where you have more on one side, less on another, so on, so forth. So density refers to to the amount of hair strands on your scalp, okay? So there's a difference between texture and density. However, density is classified in three categories as well. You have light, medium, and heavy, or you can refer to as thin, medium, and thick. Most of us do. Um, light, light density, would mean that they have less hair strands on the top of their head. Medium, you're somewhere in between. And most of the time it can be very intercha interchangeable, excuse me, depending on the person. Um, heavy, heavy is like really thick. They got a lot of hair, a lot of hair on their head. And most of the times what's so confusing is that density can give off the illusion of having really really coarse or fine or medium hair because of the number of hair strands so someone from a far distance or not even touching their hair they can have a whole lot of hair on their head a big old fro and it may look like that person hair is oh my gosh it's coarse or thick or whatever but most of the time that that gives off the illusion of a different type of texture of hair but it's not always the case that down so far okay so now we're gonna go ahead and go get into the condition of the hair so now that you know the hair type you have already we're gonna get into how you can check the condition of your hair now there are two key factors when it comes to checking the condition of the hair is one porosity two elasticity okay so what is porosity Porosity is the ability of the hair strand to absorb moisture. Yes, so it, it, it tells you how much moisture, you know, liquids, chemicals, does that particular hair strand is able to absorb, okay? And you have three different categories of porosity. You have resistant, average, and extreme. Now, this is very important for people who are chemically treating their hair. This is very, very, very important. When I say resistant, resistant doesn't mean that it's in bad condition. Actually, it's between good and not really bad, but like a little harder to deal with. When the hair is resistant, porosity, that means the cuticles are pretty much compact and closed which makes it a lot harder to um, absorb moisture into it. It takes a lot longer for that hair strand to absorb that, absorb, oops, I can't talk today, absorb that moisture. So that doesn't necessarily make the hair strand bad. It just makes it need more processing time when it is absorbing any kind of moisture or chemical. Now, average porosity. Average porosity is what everybody should look for to keep their hair in average porosity because it's in between. It's not too porous and it's not, you know, not enough porous. <laughs> so average would be just a really good center point, which is where you want your hair to be when it comes to porosity. That means the hair is quite normal and it's in good condition and it has a healthy balance of porosity and non-porosity. So um, extreme, extreme porosity is AKA damaged hair. Okay, I'm just gonna lay it out plain and simple, damaged hair. 
okay? You don't want your hair to turn into an extreme porous hair strand. That's a no-no. And reason being, that means it, it has an uneven balance of being porous, very porous. And if it is very porous, that means any kind of liquid or chemical that you apply to that hair, it will process just like that, especially chemicals. And that is not what you want. Okay, moving on. So, is my hair elastic? However, or we're going to get into you talking about elasticity. So, basically, elasticity is the ability of the hair strand to stretch and return to its natural shape without breaking. Yes. So, it's called the pull test. Pretty much, you want to stretch and pull on that hair strand and that hair strand should be able to bounce back in its original shape without breaking off. So it's pretty much how stretchy and durable the um, hair is. Um, you're looking for springiness. You're definitely looking for that, that bounce back. So if you have coils and or real co coily hair, you that, that hair strand should be able to bounce back into that same tight curl that you had before you pulled it. If not, then that means the hair is possibly damaged. Now, elasticity is, it wouldn't do a whole lot of damage. However, when it is altered, it is hard to deal with. So, you can give that hair of yours a tug just to check to see if that hair bounces back. If it breaks, you know that you have some Just some key notes to know about elasticity. Normal dry hair is capable of being stretched about one-fifth or aka 20% of its length. And when the hair is wet, it should be able to be stretched 40 to 50% of its length. So if you're not seeing that, then you know you definitely have uh, some damage of some kind. So definitely make sure you're keeping your eyes on that. Like I said, before you get any kind of service, you want to definitely make sure you check the condition of your hair before applying that service to your, your scalp. So, keep it in mind. Ooh, thought. Hey guys, we have reached the end of our video for now. And I hope that this information was helpful to you guys. This is going to help you get the process started. Like I said, this is the mo most... I can't talk today for some reason. This is the most important information you need to know before you go buy products and go into a start of a routine. You need to know about your hair. So, this is the most important phase in the regrowth process. And now we roll over to the answer to the question of the day. So, just a reminder of the question. It was, will the texture of your hair always match the density of your hair? And the answer is no, it won't. Texture and density sometimes can get a very, very, you know, confusing cross. So texture does not always match up with density. So as I said before, the difference between texture and density is texture is the feel of the hair strand and the density is the number of hair strands. Sometimes, from an illusion and a standpoint from far away, some people have a lot of hair, and it may look like their hair is coarse. However, you have to remember that if you were to break that hair down out of its natural state, how much hair would you really have and how it would feel? So, texture, density is a fine line between the two. And no, it does not always match up. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have bad hair, good hair. None of the right, guys, so what did you learn today? So for more information and details about what I talked about on this video today, you guys can email me at hairplay101 at outlook.com. Or you can make your comments, uh, your questions and concerns at the bottom of this page. Under my description box, you can leave your comments below if you have questions and you don't want to leave my email, you can list them below. And I'll definitely make sure I answer your questions and concerns live right here on YouTube. So you don't have to, you know, look for it. I'm going to give you everything right here. So I want to hear your feedback. I want to know what's, what's your hair doing. And if you have any questions, 
about how to get your hair from point A to point B, don't be afraid to leave your comments below and share your feedback, your stories, or however you feel down below. I would like to hear it, even if you don't like my video. You know, can't improve on something if I don't know. Below in my description box, I will have everything that I went over today in that description box. Also, the resources that I got my information from. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am not shooting none of these facts off the top of my head. This is straight out of the professional handbook. So don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Tune in for the next one. Don't miss